I guess I have tonight has started an interesting business even before getting into his current venture. He started out as an entrepreneur, as a young man. He's walked through the entrepreneurship journey. He's got the scars to show for it. And he'll tell us a little bit more about his journey. But what we're excited about having him on the show today exposes us to um, a company called DNA Fit, which is a venture that he started. And it's got a, a interesting dynamics on DNA testing and what that does to sports and athletes, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm joined by Mr. Avi Lazaro. Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having me here today, Spoo. Lovely. Now, you are a South African who's doing very well globally. Before we get into what you're doing right now and, and where you are and how did you become the person that you are, I'd love to go back to the younger Avi. What, what, what's your background and, and which part of South Africa did you grow up? Give us a bit of a, a, bit of a background. So uh, I originally, um, of course, uh, grew up mainly here in South Africa. Um, but since I was far back as I can remember, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to um, you know, make changes. And ultimately, with that, of course, one thing at the time, to, to make money. But saying that, it's not all about money. Being an entrepreneur, as we now know, yeah. it's about actually creating a vision and making it happen. So when I was 16, I started uh, pushing, uh, even a bit earlier, I started pushing trolleys at checkers, uh, you know, getting my 20 cents, my 30 cents, working in sandwich shops, uh, working in, uh, there was a computer store, I think, at Dion's in Weinberg many years ago. Just anything I could do to advance my, my, my passion to, to, to make a difference. Uh, and eventually, I, I went, uh, when I was 17, I went to uh, the US. Uh, I went to high school. I went on my own. That was probably the most entrepreneurial thing I ever did. At 17, you went to the US on your own? And, and I went to the US for, for two years. And while I was there, I, I, I went to high school. Um, I finished high school, but at the same time, I was working in sandwich shops, uh, you know, I literally cutting ham sandwiches for people and, you know, whatever they required. I was working in uh, stacking videos at Blockbuster Video when it existed. As you know, now Netflix is here. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, those were the days when they had video shops and really just wanted to do anything I could to, to, to move my entrepreneurial vision forward. And wanting to become an entrepreneur, here you are, you're a teenager, you're in a foreign country. How did uh, or when did the entrepreneurial bug bite you? Well, I think it's, it's funny because at the time it was more about, okay, I need to make money to survive. I was, I was, you know, I was, when I was here, I wanted to, I used to wear secondhand shoes and my, you know, I just, I couldn't afford a nice pair of shoes. I remember having a girlfriend at the time who, who actually was a lot wealthier, me, wealthier than me and I used to be embarrassed to some degree when I went around her house because I just felt so somehow, and, and I've never really spoken out loudly about that, but I felt it was like I was insignificant somehow, you know, mm. and, 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 you know, because society somehow can judge you by what you have, what you do, what you achieve. Yeah. And that's that's not a great, great, great uh, way to be judged. And so it, it, from that, I think there was something deep inside with me which said, I want to be different. And, uh, and, you know, and that's really what motivated me. The, 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 the whole, uh, you know, the whole um, perspective of everything that was going on motivated me to go out and do, do things. And I didn't really realize as an entrepreneur until you know, I started to do things which you know, became more and more successful. And successful, again, isn't measured as money in the bank necessarily it's just measured in actually seeing something in the back of your mind making it happen and then seeing it evolve into something which is quite special and what, what, what was that first business uh, well okay so the first business was um, uh, I, I, I wanted to do an online casino so at the time, online casino online okay. casino so at the time there were actually not many online casinos which is now known as the iGaming industry yeah and so I set up an online casino uh, the casino, um, I didn't know a lot about business. I knew a lot about technology and IT because that's where some of my skill set had developed. Set up this online casino. Uh, it was actually called GayGamblers.com. Um, why, why Gay Gamblers? Because at the time I identified actually that um, the pink pound uh, is, is one which um, it is high expenditure and people spending money and online. And so it was, a, a, it was tapping into a, a market segment which I thought would be quite valuable. Okay. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, it did, it did okay, but. I didn't know enough about business to be able to, you know, sustain a growth strategy to make it work long term. So, but it was a great experience. It, it was my first online entity, which got me some 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 experience. And then I look at your uh, profile here, and it says something about um, dragalizer. And then you 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 were involved in, um, in 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 some businesses while overseas. And tell us a little bit more about dragalizer. So one of the the companies which I started in the UK. Um, was called Tramega Laboratories and it specialized in drug testing in hair samples. So, and it's interesting because just circling back, when I was 
16 working at Blockbuster Video in America, the first thing they did on my weekend job was cut my hair because they wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, smoking any uh, you know, marijuana or any standard drug testing for the workplace. And I, didn't, and I didn't think twice of it. But actually, I then set up this company called Trimega Laboratories, which tested drugs in hair. And we also commercialized the, f the world's first hair alcohol test, which we can talk about. The world's first al hair alcohol test. Yeah, so testing drugs in hair be has, has become a gold standard. So hence, we're, we're, you know, like at Blockbuster, they cut my hair to test for drugs. I just knew that there was an opportunity to test for alcohol and, 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 and developed the technology to do exactly that. But just before we touch on that, going back to your previous question, as part of my South African spirit, I wanted to do technology transfer back to South Africa. So I created a project in South Africa called the Drug Eliza, in which we worked at the roadside to analyze the percentage of people that were on drugs, potentially on drugs versus alcohol. And it was done through questionnaires and surveys. And the objective there was to one, uh, you know, raise awareness about the impact of drugs while driving, but actually as a way to try and lobby the change of legislation, because if you can change legislation and you have a product, you can fit quite nicely into what the legislative requirement is. Yeah. So that was just an example again of the drug Eliza, what I did here in South Africa. But going back to the, the you know, to my, 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 what I was alluding to. So I started this company, which the drug Elizing, the, the drug testing company, and through that we created this hair alcohol test. And that was the first time in the world anybody ever measured in a commercial environment alcohol testing in hair. And that was amazing because as a result of that, we managed to keep thousands of children safe out of families which are abusive to alcohol and drugs because the courts implemented as a de facto standard in the UK. Your current venture is a venture that is going to change the world forever as far as sports is concerned. Now tell us about your new venture which is DNA Fit, which is a company that you started a few years ago. No, great. And uh, DNA Fit, uh, you know, really I believe, and we talk about entrepreneurship and vision and seeing things happen, and I do believe so, so much that DNA Fit is set to change uh, globally the sports uh, landscape. And not just sports, of course, because sports is, a, is an area where you can make a difference on health and fitness, but it also filters down to us as the general consumer who want to get the best out of their bodies when they go to the gym or they do their fitness regime. But DNA Fit, essentially, uh, we all know that genetics uh, affect so many different things of who we are. It's our blueprint of, of everything about us. So, you know, why do I have blue eyes? You know, what, you know it affects, it affects the, the curl in our hair. It affects the wax in our ear. You know, all these traits come from genetics. Even uh, as some people like a certain type of food, some people don't. It's because of the way we taste. Genetics have the bitter taste receptor gene, for example. So I knew that genetics have a big role to play in not just who we are, but in also what we do. And I realized that by taking well-known genetic or genes and putting them together in an algorithm, there's a way that we can essentially help advance sport. And what do I mean by that? So for example, if you look at uh, sprint athletes, uh, there's a gene called ACTN3. And the AC, when they did independent studies on these genes, it was known that if they looked at 100 sprint athletes, all these athletes had a particular variation of these genes. So I took a combination of these genes and I put them into an algorithm and effectively developed the world's first uh, exercise intervention study that showed if you train with your genes, you can get great uh, performance gains. So trying okay, to simplify. Can you say, say that again, simplified for a yeah, layman sorry. like myself? Yeah. Okay, sure. So, so for example, we give you, you do a simple mouth swab test. Once you get your uh, mouth swab back to our laboratory, we run an analysis on your genes and we prepare a report. And that report has two components. One is your fitness side, one is your diet side. And in technical terms, it's called sports genomics or nutritional genomics. And on the sports genomics side, we give you a report. And if we did yours, Boo, it'll come back, it'll tell you, right, you're 70% power versus 30% endurance, as an example. And then what we did is we put athletes, we put student athletes into a, a training plan based on their power and endurance percentage. So if you were 70% power, we'd put you into a plan that said when you go to the gym, what you should do is do 70% more power work as opposed to endurance work. And what we found is in the cohort of people that we did that study, the first ever published study, is that the people who trained to that methodology had a 300% difference than the ones that didn't. And that's, that's amazing. It can be the difference between a silver medal and a gold medal, a no medal and a gold medal, because in top professional sport, Minimal, mini, mini schools of seconds is what makes the difference, and yeah. this is what it essentially does. Now you've gone on to be, uh, you know, uh, awarded. I mean, for instance, there's uh, Fast Company magazine, which is one of the magazines that is highly respected in technology in America. Your company was, um, you know, one of the uh, tech companies 
uh, uh, um, uh, recognized alongside the likes of your Netflix, etc., and 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 all the all those are accolades and achievements, and 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 and, and I see your company going far and, and and going beyond. If I'm sitting somewhere right now and and, and I'm watching and I want to participate in in, in 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 what you guys are doing, or or I don't understand it, I want better understanding. I mean, what do I do? Okay, so uh, just addressing the issue of awards, I mean, it's, we've been so fortunate and privileged. We, this year we got a, uh, nominated to the Fast Company's Top 50 Global Innovative Companies in the World. As you, you mentioned, a, a ranked along the sides of Netflix, Spotify, NASA, which is a, an amazing accolade. But we've also been privileged to win a number of UK innovation awards as well. And in terms of how people get involved, I mean, there's a, there's a huge global shift towards personalization and proactive health monitoring. So if you talk about Africa, there's statistics in Africa which shows the use of uh, not just mobile phone, but uh, you know, m mobile technology, you know, and the, you know, implementation of you know, much more advanced mobile phone. Uh, you know, for example, uh, monitoring of steps on Fitbit uh, devices, Apple Watches, for example, Fitbits, they all telling you what to do, how many steps you should walk, how you should lose weight, you know, effectively how you should lose weight and keep it off. And so this is empowered in Africa and around the world, people's you know, approach to fitness and health. You know, they want to do more. They want to monitor their health more. They want to look at what they can do better. And DNA testing effectively removes the one-size-fits-all approach. It, it, it's, it's, it's almost like an approach to complete personalization of how you should eat and how you should exercise. The world is changing, guys. Entrepreneurs means more opportunities for you and I, especially the younger guys who are innovative. Guys, it's our time and our time is now. He's a South African entrepreneur who's doing great things all over the world. And wrapping up, Mr. Avi Lazaro, what would you like to say to our viewers? Yeah, so if you can, if you can visualize something, you can make it happen. Uh, if you don't have a formal education, that is not the be-all and end-all. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to think differently. And if you can think differently, you can get successes. And just believe in yourself because you can make it happen. He used to work at Checkers, he used to push trolleys. He was a young man who didn't get any formal education, no degrees, no, but he did it. He just believed in himself. He had a dream and he's a global entrepreneur. You can think big and you can become bigger. Thank you so much for joining us once again tonight.